Hello and welcome to another video on Design Script. In this video, I'm going to be discussing non-manifold geometry. Non-manifold geometry is a means of representing three-dimensional geometry in a manner similar to Boolean forms. If you don't know what Boolean operations are, watch my previous video. But it's a means of representing Boolean uh, combinations of forms. But instead of kind of reducing all objects to a single monolithic solid, it kind of preserves the initial boundaries that were present in the overlapping forms that you use to Boolean together. So in other words, if you take a, a sphere and a cube and kind of do smash them together, in a Boolean they kind of become one singular monolithic solid. In non-manifold geometry, those interior partitions that divided uh, the sphere uh, from the cube are maintained. Uh, moreover, then you can sort of traverse this data structure by interrogating the individual cells um, and and extract out the kind of semantic logic of how this, this object is put together. So in other words, it's, it's much more powerful than Boolean because it doesn't just remove all the information that was used to create uh, these forms. So I'll, I'll make a very simple example by importing a standard library. I'm creating a cuboid. So I'm creating a cube and a plane. It kind of goes right through the very center of the cuboid. And I'm going to use this to actually slice the cuboid in two. So I'll go, I'll make my non-manifold solid. And I'll input a plane, P, but Notice that this kind of pop-up dialog box, and in terms of the two parameters, it can either be a, we can either input a single plane, but then we can also input this this flag, this boolean flag that says is regular. Well, as you might guess, um, non-manifold uh, is is the, the word with non means it's not actually regular. So if we want to make a non-manifold geometry, which is a, a not regular piece of geometry. Uh, we'll want to input a false flag in here. So it's not going to be regular, which means it will be non-manifold. So by inputting false here, we'll create a, a non-manifold solid, which has all these properties that I previously discussed of um, being able to being a single solid, but with which actually preserves an interior partition between it. So if I switch to the wireframe view, you can see that um, this is still one solid, but it now has an interior partition inside of it that divides two cells. Okay, so I'm just going to copy and paste some code in here to generate a slightly more example, a uh, complex example. You can see right here. So again, this is actually a, another uh, non-manifold solid, but similar operation, just with more planes and kind of skewed directions. And I can see I can click on it, and it's still it's still a monolithic form. But I can actually extract out the individual cells inside of this. So I'll, I'll get a central cell, like a cell in the very center of this object. So you can see what essentially has gone on here. I've essentially sort of selected, so to speak. I've, I've, uh, I've kind of queried this non-manifold solid for its cells. Now, every single non-manifold solid has a series of cells. You can see from uh, this example here, or this diagram here, that a non-manifold geometry has this property of a cell. And a cell has, uh, has an, a property of having a number of adjacent cells, as well as uh, 
adjacent faces and other, other things, and, as well as solid geometry. And each face, of course, which is the dividing barrier between individual cells, has these adjacent cells to it. And uh, faces contain vertices, and a vertex contains adjacent faces and edges. So in other words, from any given sort of cell or point on a, a non-manifold solid, you can query what are the things next to it. And that's actually what I'm going to do now. Is essentially, I'll, I'll take this same kind of central cell. I'll say, um, and then this cell number 2. I'll say cell number two um, dot adjacent shells, all in uh, geometry, translate, and I'll just uh, store this into a variable. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm taking this exact same central cell, but before I took the solid geometry out of it, which is the kind of visual representation, and I translated it up 12 units. In this call, I'm going to take the adjacent cells. So in other words, we can see here that this face would be abutting up against another cell, and this face here would be abutting up against another cell. And same with this face here. They all are kind of connected together. So if I run this, I'm going to translate these ones also, but instead of going 12, they go 16, which is slightly higher. So here we can see this. So all these, these cells, these are the ones that are adjacent to it. These are the ones that are, you know, connected to it. So I've, I've been able to successfully sort of determine not only like I, of what the geometry of the cell is, but how it relates to the larger whole of the model. And similarly, for each one of these cells, I can say, well, what are the adjacent cells to this cell, etc. So you can imagine this is, is much more um, uh, a nuanced and powerful way of, of interrogating geometry than a simple Boolean operation, because it has this attached data structure. Okay, thank you for watching this video. Bye.